The best way to find mentors, despite not having one, is through books. They are your mentors. It's such a great way to educate yourself. So uh, you must be reading books. You must be educating yourself. I promise you, you know, 10, 20, 30 books later, uh, you'll have, you know, much more superior knowledge than the average person. Hey guys, my name is Bashar Hatoum, founder of Fundo Loans and uh, host of MVP Podcast. Thank you so much for watching the videos. If you have been, for liking, for sharing and subscribing, we're almost at 2,000. So I've been watching that every single day. You know, we're getting it. We've made, uh, we've generated, I've just been told in YouTube ads alone, eight bucks, baby. <laughs> we've made $8 thus far. So we're monetizing the shit out of this. Um, no, but uh, look, reason for this video is I wanted to uh, share some book recommendations. Reason for, I think, you know, uh, picking out the top three or five books is, uh, you know, I, I want to first highlight how important it is that you're reading. If you want to succeed in life, um, if you want mentors around you, you know, there's a lot of times that people say, you know, you watch whoever it is, Gary V, Grant Cardone, you name them. They're always saying, find a mentor. Well, sometimes you don't have mentors and, um, you know, you've got to pave your own way. The best way to find mentors, despite not having one, is through books. They are your mentors. They are people that you can look up to and read about and learn from. Um, and, you know, it's such a great way to educate yourself. So uh, you must be reading books. You must be educating yourself. It doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter if you've just started out at university or if you're well into your career. Reading books will set you apart. You'll learn. Uh, it's a great way to meditate. I, I promise you, you know, 10, 20, 30 books later, uh, you'll have, you know, much more superior knowledge than the average person. Uh, and that's how you start earning the big bucks. So uh, let's let's get straight into it. The first book, The 10X Rule. So I, I put this as the first book uh, because I think it's all about attitude, motivation, um, the the will and desire to succeed. If you want to eat, you got to first hunger. So this book's all about the mental drive you need to have when achieving your goals. Regardless of what you want in life, if you want a million bucks, well, aim for 10, 10x. 10x that number because if you're aiming for 10 mil and you miss, you're going to be far better off than if you hit your target of just one mil. So dream bigger. And that's honestly one of the biggest things that lets people down. They don't even give themselves the chance to believe. They don't even give themselves the, the ability or the desire to aim for something greater. And they think, hey, this is all I've got. You know, I'm just going to increase from 10 to 20%. No, 10x that shit. 10x your goals, 10x your desires, and you'll be much further ahead if you do that. So that's the first book, 10x rule by Grant Cardone. Really love that book. The second book is E-Myth Revisited. So this is a book uh, for people that are running businesses or want to run a business. And one of the most common problems you hear when when discussing, you know, with a business person or someone starting out or someone on our podcast is, you know, I feel like I'm being pulled in so many different ways. I don't have enough time to work on the business and I'm stuck working in the business. Well, the e -Myth Revisited breaks that down for you. So uh, there's three there's three personalities. There's the manager, the technician, and the entrepreneur. The manager is the person hiring the staff. The entrepreneur is the person getting the lease. And uh, the technician's the person baking the bread. So it talks about when to be a technician, when should you be baking the bread, working on working with your specific client, when should you be hiring key people for different roles, and when should you take a step back and say, hey, it's time to scale up, it's it's time to you know uh, get a new lease or or uh, get a new business relationship with another supplier. So it's a great way to sort of break that down for people struggling with you know um, the workload as a business owner and you know everyone knows when you're first in business feels like you need you need a clone of yourself to get anywhere near what you're trying to accomplish so it sort of rationalizes it for you and gives you a process uh, on how to how to sort of optimize that and so that you can better better yourself and your business um, along the way uh, this book is a is a guilty is a guilty favorite of mine 48 laws of power uh, it's very Machiavellian. It's very dark. Um, I wouldn't, you know, I think it's, I think it's, uh, Mark Burris actually had this on his, his reading list and he said it himself. He goes, I think, I think having the sort of attitude that the book sort of conveys is, can be negative and can be hurtful. Uh, and it sort of talks about like, I'll give you an example. The first law is 
never outshine the master. So if you've got a boss and you're outperforming and, you know, sometimes the boss will be threatened by that and they'll be like, hmm, you know, maybe they're going for my job or maybe they're impressing him so much that, um, you know, I'm going to be harder on them or I'm going to, I'm going to cut down their ego. And that happens a lot in life. You know, people get threatened. People are jealous. Uh, and so it talks about, you know, how not to outshine, make sure you're giving your boss credit when they need it and sort of how to navigate that sort of politics of it all, the politics of the corporate life. And I think if you are in the corporate world, The 48 Law Laws of Power is a great book because a lot of these concepts, they're universal laws. People have always been jealous. People will always be threatened by you. So it'll give you an example historically of where that occurred and how to navigate that. And so when it happens to you in real life, you go, hey, I read about this. I actually know how to better prepare myself next time. So that's the third book. Fourth book is another Robert Greene book. Uh, it's called Mastery. Uh, it's about being a master in your craft. And I think a lot of people get down when they when they feel they're not getting ahead or, you know, they're like, hey, I've been doing this for a year and I'm really not getting it. Maybe this is not for me. I'm not loving it. And a lot of people get caught up in that sort of mental, mental uh, roadblock where um, because they feel like they're not getting ahead or seeing the results after a year, they give up and then they start something again and then they give up again. You just keep quitting. If you never quit, you never fail. So that's what mastery is all about. It's about applying yourself over and over again to one specific thing for years and years and one day you'll come out a master and that's how you start earning money. Um, so that's a good fourth book uh, that I'd highly recommend. Last but not least, uh, The Lean Startup. So the Lean Startups, uh, you know, we literally named the podcast after this book, MVP. It's not mi uh, Most Valuable Player, it's Minimal Viable Product. Uh, and there's a quote that um, I think a lot of people should understand and, and remind themselves. If, if you're waiting for your product to be perfect, it's too late. If you're proud of your product when you first release it, it's too late. A lot of people think that they have to get the website perfect. And the amount of people I've heard, I'm working on an app, I'm working on a website. And six months later, oh yeah, I'm working on this new feature. I'm trying to integrate ChatGPT into it. It's like, yeah, that's, that's all cool. But perfect is the enemy of done. Just get the product out there because what you'll find is once you launch, you're going to change. You're going to hear feedback from customers and you're going to pivot. You're going to add a feature. Hey, a customer is going to call you and say, say something really insightful and you're going to say, wow, we should have done that. Let's do that now. So you're better off learning on the run. Don't try and perfect whatever it is that you're building. And that's what the MVP is all about. The Lean Startup is all about. Um, it's about not setting out to build a Lamborghini build a skateboard, ride that skateboard. The amount of businesses, business owners that can just start with an Excel sheet. That's all you need. All you need is an Excel sheet to start your business. You don't need a CRM and integrations into Zapier and, you know, this fully fledged way, uh, APIs with, you know, integrations to XYZ. Just get started the most basic way possible. Um, you know, you can do, you can do basic marketing through leaflet drops. You don't need to have uh, a marketing agency set up. Just get started. That's what the book's about. Uh, and I think it's a very good educational book on how to start a business and how to sort of validate hypotheses that you have. Like, hey, if I start this website, I'm going to get customers. Okay, we'll put the website up. Did you get customers? No. Okay, this website's not right. And you sort of optimize and reiterate that way. So um, iterate, excuse me, that way. So that's a great book. Just go to the business section of Audible if you don't like to read and listen. And that's honestly what I did. I set a goal when I first started to read one book or listen to one book a week. Uh, by the 50th week or the 30th week, I just had so much knowledge um, and knew so much about different topics as it related to business that I... I I felt so much more confident in myself. Not only did I set a goal and I achieved it, but I was educating myself and I was listening to a whole bunch of advisors that had done it and achieved so much. So um, please, I implore you, read lots of books. And uh, you know, I know it's an off the cuff thing. And I know it's easy to say, but how much time are you spending endlessly scrolling on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok? Do something with yourself, educate yourself, and uh, you'll be more self-confident you build character um, and uh, you'll be better off because of it, I promise.